wellness is a healthy mind which is even more important than a healthy body a healthy mind is more important than just a healthy body people spend a lot of time in stress because they don't know when the next paycheck will come how do you feel when your rent is due in a week's time and you are in a state of panic you're in panic mode you go to sleep thinking about it you wake up thinking about it you know that's not life you don't need to have a great job to have a healthy financial life you don't have to have a well big pain job there are multi-millionaires who have gone bankrupt mike tyson was earning 30 million dollars per fight eventually went bankrupt it has nothing to do with how much you're earning it has to do with your knowledge your knowledge, knowledge. so in nigeria today even if you are earning hundred thousand naira a month maybe 150 and you are very smart with the way you manage money in the next 10 20 years you can have a higher net worth than somebody who was earning two million a month in life a lot of people take wrong steps that land them into depression and lack of wellness that's where the mind comes in you have a healthy mind that your mind has good knowledge and then you apply that knowledge it's not just so if you know the right thing to do I, oh i should take insurance seriously and you don't do it you have knowledge but you are not applying it so you are not wise so the more you move the less you die the more you move the less you die yeah you know people have committed suicide because they feel like life is just empty people who have some form of religious connection or faith affiliation live longer and have better life energy is formed in your liver in form of glycogen your body is created to deplete that gly glycogen levels every 12 hours so if you eat more than twice a day you don't deplete your glycogen levels you can end up having a fatty liver so if you eat more than twice a day you end up having more fat in your liver because of that because your glycogen levels are not depleted so it now stores itself in your liver as excess and that's why i would not recommend that people eat more than twice a day i would never twice recommend. a day yes when when people say eat three times a day it's concept, not where does that concept no, come from and it has been from foundation you know what it was food industry in connivance with the pharmaceutical industry and the health industry pushing it out to make sure that food industries sell more this yes. secret must leak of course it's, it's a cartel where people are working hand in hand to make sure that the more people fall sick the pharmaceutical industry is going to gain it's a cartel so when people say three square meals there's no health fact to back it up that you must eat three times a day you need to understand that fasting is the best diet some people say they're playing with ulcer no no it doesn't necessarily mean that everybody who can engage in a fast is going to eventually have ulcer no studies have shown that people who are religious mm. tend to live 10 years longer than those who are not Why? so okay there are many reasons Hello everyone, welcome once again to another episode of Sela Meditate. I am Benzik and today we are going to be discussing on health and wellness. You know, once we talk about health, most people think of infirmities or disease or sickness within the body. But health is holistic, it's general, it is physical, emotional, mental, psychological and all around what makes you do better and act better and also live better because health they say is wealth so once you are well and you are healthy emotionally psychologically physically mentally you can be able to do well live well and enjoy life and also make money because this life without health you can't enjoy the money we are pursuing so i have a very powerful guest that's my very good friend here that's going to do justice to this topic and he's a knowledge entrepreneur He's a life coach and he's also an author so today he's going to do justice to this very topic once you are healthy you are going to be worthy so guys make welcome my very good friend mr dekomi Olusanya. thank you once again for joining me for this episode thank you for having me it's very good to always have you and to have this very mind brainstorming discussion with you now today we're going to be discussing on health and wellness but i've been curious i try try to understand what got you interested in health and wellness? Well, I've always been interested in health and wellness because I saw a lot of people who I knew um, fall susceptible to diseases, die prematurely. And so it gave me a consciousness that, you know, come, you don't want to end up like this. You don't want to end up like this. You don't want to uh, fall to cancer or all these diseases. Um, at before your time you know and then i began to research read study and i saw that a lot of these things were highly preventable very that you know um health was like a science that if you do certain things you will see certain or have certain outcomes and so i i was also fascinated by it the fact that you can actually control your health to a large extent mm. and so um i started studying and started imbibing those habits 
you know and um for so a lot of those habits i've been doing them for well over a decade now is that about your habits or you're just interested in seeing everything go well yes when you're interested in seeing everything go well you are going to have to take action and you know what is a habit a habit is you know an action that you have repeated over time mm. you know so so that's it so i had a desire you know so and not just for me I like to see people prosper to do well. I really like to see people live their best lives, mm. uh, optimize, optimize their potential. And so uh, because of that, I took interest in, you know, being healthy, being well, you know, holistically. And is there um, any personal experience that drew you into that path? Yeah, I shared with you. I said that I had <coughs> relatives, you know, people okay. I knew who died prematurely, you know. Uh, you see, have, know people who are very good people, very smart, very intelligent, and they are dying in their 40s, they are dying in their 50s, some of them in their 60s, 60s. And then, but you see that the diseases that killed them were preventable diseases. Mm. There, were th there were things that these people could have done to prevent it. And these were people who left behind children. Some of them were young children. So, you know, all those things. And I looked at my life, the kind of life I wanted to live, and mm. I said, I don't want to end up like this. Mm. Mm. And not just for me, for people around me, and not just for even people around me, the whole world in general. I feel like if I understood some of these principles, I could share them with the world. I could be a blessing to the world. I could help, you know, people to live their best lives. Now, what is wellness? Okay. Wellness is an act of taking daily ha uh, steps or having, putting in place daily habits uh, towards your health outcomes uh, so that instead of <coughs> surviving, you are thriving. Okay. I want to break it down. You know, in wellness, is an act of taking daily health habits or putting in place daily health habits mm, towards a desired outcome. So there are daily habits, mm -hmm. health-related habits. Then there's also a desired outcome. Mm, okay. So that instead of just surviving, you are thriving. That is, you are living your best possible life. Instead of surviving, you are thriving. You are thriving, yes. So okay. that's what wellness is. Okay. Now, how can people achieve wellness in their life? Okay. I'll start by saying that wellness is holistic. So, wellness is a healthy mind. A healthy mind. First of all. Okay. Which is even more important than a healthy body. Okay. Yeah. In the hierarchy of wellness... I rate a healthy mind. In fact, a healthy mind is more important than just a healthy body. Okay. So there's a healthy mind. Mm -hmm. There's a healthy professional life. Okay. Mm -hmm. Some people have healthy bodies, in quotes, but they don't have healthy professional lives. They go to work. They are not fulfilled at work. They don't look forward to Monday mornings or going to work, and then they can't wait for the weekend to be over. They don't have healthy professional life, or they are in a toxic work environment. So a healthy mind, a healthy professional life, a healthy social life. Some people don't have the right people around them. Mm -hmm. And so when they are going through challenges, mm -hmm. they don't make the best out of those challenges. Some of them came in. Some of them, you know, people, you're afraid of people on a regular basis who commit suicide. Some of them leave suicide notes. And when you read their notes, you could tell that if they had the right social group, mm -hmm. the right people around them, mm -hmm. those suicide, um, and, and those suicide um, uh, attempts would have been prevented. I mean, will never have occurred. So, first of all, like I say again, it's a healthy mind, mm -hmm. then a healthy professional life, a healthy social circle, mm -hmm. healthy okay. social cycle. Then okay. beyond that, you need a healthy creative expression. Mm, yeah. Creative expression. Yes. The ability to express yourself creatively is part of wellness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's part of wellness. And then beyond the healthy creative expression, you also need a healthy spiritual connection. Mm -hmm. Yes, whether we like it or not, man is body soul and spirit my mind is actually spirit mm. soul and body okay mm. okay yeah so there's healthy i mean i'm going to talk, talk about a book written by daniel boyd now who worked in the national geographic it's um, a new york times bestseller and in that book he talks about five blue zones people places where people live the longest mm. people yeah. live to be 90 100 it's common mm. that's what you call a blue zone mm. a place where majority of the people live to be over 90 and 100 okay. you know places like loma linda in california i carry um in greece nagoya in costa rica okinawa in japan and sardina in um italy in those places eh, those places people belong to some form of religious group you know yes and it has been shown studies have shown that people who are religious mm. tend to live 10 years longer than those who are not mm. people who are religious mm. or have some form of religious affiliation eh, tend to live 
between seven to ten years longer. Why? So, okay, there are many reasons. You see, number one, when you have some religious affiliation, there's something it does to your mind. And I told you that the most important hierarchy in wellness is a healthy mind. There's something it does to your mind. It gives you hope. Uh, it gives you faith. It gives you um, the kind of good feeling, not just feelings, but the good thoughts that lead to the right neurotransmitters and hormones in your body that help you live your best life. It helps also all those other areas we're talking about, like your creative expressions. That's why you have faiths that tell you what to eat and what not to eat. Mm -hmm. eh? And you see that some of those things that are forbidden by some of these faiths mm -hmm. are actually unhealthy. And some of the things that they permit are actually healthy. So, you know, so your, your religious affiliation actually ticks a lot of boxes in all those other areas. It guides you to eat healthy. You know, the Jewish kosher diet is a, one of the healthiest diets. Not the, I won't call it the healthiest, but it's a healthy diet. But guess what? You find out that, you know, the kosher diet was gotten from the Torah. Uh, you know, the first five books of the Bible, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And you see, so that that's can you can see the way the connection comes yes, in. So it's yeah. not just diets, it's a um, religious affiliations tell you how to create the right social groups, mm. they tell you how to handle life challenges and mm. all that. So that's where religion comes in. Okay. You know, so b uh, in continuation to what I was saying, I said that a, a healthy spiritual connection mm. uh, is part of uh factors that contribute to wellness, okay. is, is the factor in the hierarchy of wellness. And then you also have um a healthy body okay. because at the end of the day you need a body mm, yeah. you need a body so yeah. if you look at everything we've spoken about now mm. first of all we started with a healthy mind mm. a healthy professional life mm. uh, and after that a healthy social circle mm. then healthy creative expression for then five um, um healthy spiritual connection mm. and then six a healthy body now yeah, you've spoken this these are hierarchies. Yes, in, yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. Now yeah, can yeah. you break them down one by one, these hierarchies in this in this wellness journey? Yes. So we can okay. start with the mind. Okay. The mind. The mind. The mind. So the mind is at the top of it all. Yes, yes. If yes. you have a sound mind, it's yes. more it's easier. Yes. To it's easier down. to achieve all the other all areas the of hierarchy. Okay. The yes. mind. Yes. So the thing about the mind is that when you think about let me start with this to say that stress. Most diseases are caused by stress. According to Dr. Bruce Lipton, he says that up to 95% of disease is caused by stress. You know, that word disease means dis-ease. You are not at ease. Okay. So you are in some form of chaos or turmoil. You are not at ease. You are at a state of unease. Uh, he says most diseases are caused by stress. And most stress is caused by wrong thinking. Mm. Mm. Back to the mind. So That's first, right. so disease is caused by stress, mm. and then stress is caused by wrong, wrong thinking. thinking. So you are not thinking properly about a thing; it leads to stress, and then the stress eh, leads to disease. Your because when you are stressed, your immune system collapses, so your immunity goes down, and then diseases can um, um, come in. So right. the, 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 the um, free radicals in your body, and and you know those or everything in your body that should fight disease. Eh, sense of is sort of subdued and then those diseases can you know take over so let me give you a practical example on how the wrong thinking mm. can affect your immunity there's a drug there are drugs called placebo drugs and i'll show you how wrong thinking and right thinking placebo. can uh, yeah, affect your health a placebo drug is a drug that does not really um contain any um medicinal ingredients that can help the patient most of the time placebo drugs are just contain water yes and i'll give you i'll go into details however a patient takes the drug believing with the mindset that ah this drug is going to make me feel better and they feel so. better can you see yeah that's that's it's called so placebo you have placebo effect. drugs even doctors are placebos themselves doctors can tell a patient who actually has Maybe in one form of challenge or the other that oh, don't worry, you're gonna be okay. And because they believe the doctor, mm. they, they, they get better. They get better. They get better. So um there's a particular drug called crebiosin. Crebiosin was administered to um, a patient in America who had cancer. Okay. Uh, and the crebiosin was just distilled water. 
a capsule that contained just distilled water, just water. Mm. This patient took this drug and recovered. Wow. Recovered and recovered. Wow. But that's not just, that's not the only example. There are many instances of how your mind mm. eh, can heal your body. But let's go into other areas. Um, I've seen people understand how life works. That is their mind, the way they interpret life. Mm. Mm. And once they understand how mind works, they have better outcomes in their lives. Sometimes some of people in their professional lives, people in their... Um, there's this story I tell a lot. The story of two billionaires who went bankrupt. And one eventually committed suicide and the other eventually became America's president. But both of them suffered a chaotic experience, bankruptcy. One eventually committed suicide, Boris Berezovsky, a, 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 a Russian uh, oligarch and billionaire. And then the other was Donald Trump, who went bankrupt. And then, but the way, the, the problem, I mean, the difference is that the way both of them interpreted it. One interpreted this to see, ah, if I'm going bankrupt, it means there's something bigger. If at this stage of my life I, I go bankrupt, it's mm. because there's something bigger ahead of me, mm. you know. And he said, okay, I'll just um, stay the tide and just, you know, be. I'll just persevere. And then eventually that led to one or two things happening. Uh, him getting a reality TV show, which The Apprentice, which was the most popular uh, reality TV show at that time. Mm. And then his popularity grew and he just led to him feeling like, man, let me run for president. And then nobody gave him a chance. And the rest is history. He became America's president, mm. you know. And then the other person committed suicide. So, you know what? Let me tell you something. It is not what happens to us that makes us sad. It is how we interpret what happens to us that makes us sad. Mm. I'll repeat that again. It is not what happens to us that makes us sad. It mm. is how, how we interpret, interpret what happens to us that makes us sad. Mm. Yes. Mm. So, I'll give you an example. If somebody, if you were to be riding in a car with a person, mm. oh, sorry, you're driving in, um, on, on the streets and you see somebody driving so fast and the person um, drove in a manner that was, you consider rough and you got upset and you tried to chase him and you went close to him mm. and you saw a dead body by his side and you saw that he was rushing to the hospital to try to save that person. There was somebody in critical condition. Mm. Huh? Mm. Would you still be angry, upset? Now that you understand that the reason why that person drove very fast was that he's trying to save a life. Mm. Would you still be upset? Not at all. So can you see that it is not what happened eh, that made you upset. It was the way you interpreted, interpreted what it. happened. Mm. Do you understand? Yes. That's true. Yes. That's yes. true. Yeah. That's okay. Continue on the hierarchy. You mentioned mind. Yes. Okay. The next so one. the first one is a healthy mind. You need yes. a healthy mind. Okay. But I need to say that the way you build a healthy mind mm. Mm, is through acquisition of knowledge acquisition, acquisition. Of yes you have knowledge. to you have to keep on you have to acquire quality knowledge good okay. knowledge yeah um the way you can interpret things for example you see a lot of people a lady in nigeria committed suicide in uh, january she worked with a bank you know her name was amarachi and she said in her notes that a suicide note that uh, things are not looking good for me. My figures are not looking great. The future does not seem bright, does not seem bright at all, mm. you know. And she says the economy is hard. Yes. She was going through certain things in her life mm, that made her sad, her mind. Now, let me play a scenario to you. Let's assume that because I have, I'm a coach. Mm. And people call me every now and then and they want, they want help in terms of mental health and wellness and all that. So somebody calls me one morning and says that, call me, I'm feeling suicidal. And I say, why are you feeling suicidal? And he says that um, I took a loan to invest. I took a loan and I invested in Bitcoin and the price of Bitcoin has crashed tremendously. Now, there's an action. Mm. Uh, that has led to an occurrence which has gotten him into anxiety, worry, and depression, mm. which is making him suicidal. Yeah. But guess what? He took that decision based on his lack of knowledge. You don't take a loan to invest in a very risky and volatile asset. At that time, Bitcoin, and even up to now, Bitcoin is a volatile asset. Now, mm. when it comes to investment, mm, you don't take a huge loan to invest in a volatile asset. Mm. Do you understand? So what led, landed him into stress and depression was his lack of knowledge. Hmm. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. Lack of knowledge. That's lack true. of knowledge. Now, another lady, you know, 
spoke to me. She was suffering from depression as well. What happened? Her shop got burnt in Balogo. Hmm. Oh, and and you, in Balogo market. You know what? And what the main problem people have is lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. You know what? Mind. She did not insure her shop. She didn't insure it. That is lack of knowledge. Hmm. When you lack knowledge, uh, it will haunt you in the future. It's only a matter of time. So, and I tell people, one of, and I told you that you also need a healthy financial life. It's part of the hierarchy, mm. a healthy financial life. You know, so one of the ways to build a healthy financial life is that there are certain things you need to, you need to have a financial goal. You need to have a savings plan. Is this you healthy need to, financial life also tied to the mind or it's another hierarchy? It's, it's another, it's a difference. It's a, yes, it's okay, a different. Second hierarchy, nice. Fine, healthy financial life. No, it's not the second. I told you the first was a healthy mind. The second yes. was a healthy professional life. Okay. Yes. A healthy financial life is just part of it. It's not the second. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now this lady went into depression because her shop got burnt. Her shop got burnt and she and, and she went into depression because it wasn't insured. It wasn't insured. Two days ago, there was a heavy rain in Lagos. Eh? In VI, a tree fell on a car and the car crashed. I mean, the, the car was a write-off. Um, uh, uh, my wife sent me pictures. But guess what? If that car was insured, the person need not worry really but you see with in life a lot of people take wrong steps that land them into depression and lack of wellness so you see that's where the mind comes in the mind you have a healthy mind that your mind has good knowledge and then you apply that knowledge it's not just so if you know the right thing to do uh, oh i should take insurance seriously and you don't do it you have knowledge but you are not applying it so you are not wise mm, that's true. so you don't have you really don't have a healthy mind mm. Do you understand? Yes, so true. can you see how the healthy mind leads to wellness? Yes, wellness. No. So true. I can give you so many examples, so many examples, but in a nutshell, mm -hmm. that's how having and you know you build you have a healthy mind by reading the best books. So I encourage people for you to be well, read the best books on habit formation, read the best books on marketing, read the best books on branding, read the best books on health, read the best books on wealth, read the best books on critical thinking, read the best books on peak performance. Read the best books on um, cognitive enhancement. You know, read the best books on 20 of the most... Um, read the best books on public speaking and confidence, you know. Read the best books on how to plan your life and, 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 and goal setting and all that, you know. Mm. So, read the best books, you know. I have a book club that does that, but you know, that, that's even whether you join a book club or not. You should do it if you... Because if you, if you even, even if you join a book club and you are not reading those books or you are not getting involved, you know, at the end of the day, it's not going to work for you. But mm. knowledge, knowledge is what gives you a health. One of the things that is what gives you a healthy mind. You must know. You must increase your knowledge as well. Mm. You know, and that healthy mind will lead to healthy actions. That healthy actions will lead to an amazing lifestyle. Wow. So that break down the second uh, on the hierarchy. Okay. The second is a healthy professional life. Okay. Now, you see a lot of people go into depression because they are doing jobs that they don't like. They're in jobs that they don't like. They're in jobs they don't like. Yes. yes. Sometimes it, it's to be, it could be a toxic work environment or it could be a job that you just, you just don't like. You don't, you're, not, you're not inspired. It does not, not inspire motivated. you, you know, and all that. So, um, uh, so that's why a healthy professional life is very good. If you are doing a job that you love, mm. uh, guess what? A lot of people die in the first year of retirement than in the last year work which means that you can't you can't you can't isolate your work from your health and your your longevity and your overall life you know a lot of people i'll say it again a lot of people die in the first year of retirement that is the year after they have retired mm. than in the last year of work wow why yeah because probably they, there's no fulfillment anymore there's no fulfillment anymore and that's that's that could be one of the reasons why it happens but your professional life is very crucial to your longevity so okay getting what doing what what you love what inspires you you have a vision mm. that compels you you have a, a a mission you have a goal you know that is a compelling one that mm. you know something that makes you wake up in the morning so mm. that's why you have people who are warren buffett is over 90 and he's still investing. He still wakes up every morning. He's still working. But guess what? He says, I love investing. So he's still reading the Wall Street Journal and other um, 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 uh, journals and uh, um, financial statements. He spends five hours every day, you know, and has been doing so for over five decades, you know, reading. He loves what he does. Do you understand? That's right. So when you love what you do 
of course, feel good hormones are going to be released. There's serotonin, there's oxytocin, there's dopamine. It's going to help your body. Those are hormones that, you know, activate your parasympathetic nervous system, which heals your body. Mm. Yes, yes. Mm. But when you are working in a job that you don't like, mm. huh, three hormones are going to be released. Cortisol, norepinephrine, and epinephrine. Wow. Those hormones eh, weaken the immune system. Hmm. They even weaken the synapses in your brain. Allowing you to, I mean, making you lose concentration and attentiveness, and it collapses the the, the immune system. Hmm. This is how this. Hmm. For example, when you are stressed, fat accumulates on the uh, walls of your blood vessels, and eh? after a while, it thickens your blood vessels. It leads to high blood pressure and then hypertension. Hmm. Yeah, that's how it works. Hmm. So look at it. Stress leads to fat accumulation. Fat accumulation leads to what? Thickening of the blood vessels, and that that leads to what? high blood pressure and hypertension mm. can you wow. see can you see how it works wow. that's true yeah so it's always good to make sure that you are working in a job that you like you're working in a job that you like yeah that fulfills you may, may, now every now and then you hear people um suffering burnout at work yes they are working long hours you know some people um suffer a lot of mental issues at work mm. you see it happening you hear about it you know people um and are not, not happy at work and it affects other areas of their life. It affects their health as well. So the third hierarchy. So after a professional life, you mm. want a healthy social circle. Healthy social circle. That is, you want the right people around you. You want the right acquaintances, the right friends. You want the right confidants. You want the right coaches. You know, you want the right support system around you. You want to have the right doctor. You want to have the right lawyer. You don't want a lawyer who is going to use your information to work against you. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Mm. We have a lot of people have suffered. In that, those are, you don't want a, a friend that is going to betray you. You want a friend that is going to um, have an affair with your husband. Mm. And you don't even know smiling with you and all that. So mm. you need the right social, social circle. circle. <laughs> but if you, you, you want that, you want that. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> King Charles, about 10 years ago, of course, he was Prince Charles. And he was at a state in his life where he was not fulfilled. He was just, life was just boring. He was not fulfilled. But he had a good friend, Christopher Soames, a UK diplomat. And Christopher Soames, he discussed his unfulfillment with Christopher Soames. And that's one thing that people need to do, you know. It's not just having the right social people around you. You must share things with them. Whenever your challenges, discuss it with them. Sometimes they say a problem discussed is a problem you have solved. You know, sometimes what is a challenge to you is something that is easy peasy to the next person. The person knows the solution. So he said, "Ah, Christopher, I'm unfulfilled. I feel very unfulfilled. I, I feel very unfulfilled." And um, he, after discussing and breaking it down to Christopher, Christopher said, "You know what? You see you." You underutilize your princehood. And he said, what do you mean? He said, you know what? Guess what? A lot of people would like to have, a lot of world leaders would love to have dinner with you. A lot of world leaders would love to have dinner with you. You know what? He said, start organizing state dinners, royal dinners, royal mm. banquets mm. with leaders from all around the world, celebrities and leaders from all around the world. Uh, raise money at those places, at, at, those, at those events, raise money. And guess what? He started doing it, started raising money. Huh? He raised over 200 million euros in just a couple of years. Wow. Uh, and guess what? He started using the funds to renovate antiquated buildings in the UK. And he said, now I feel more fulfilled. Hmm. Can you see how a life went from unfulfilled to fulfilled? Why? He discussed with a friend. Wow. He just discussed with a friend. Wow. Discussed wow. with a friend. I'll give you another one. Um, I give more credit. Um former CEO of Access Bank, together with his late um, uh, partner, you Harvard. know, um, Herbert Wigwe, went to Harvard. They were at Guaranteed Trust Bank and they had, they, the bank sent them to Harvard for a course. And at the course, they saw young people who were starting organizations, successful organizations. Then they came back to Nigeria and said, you know what, let's start our own bank. Let's acquire a bank and start. They were in the right social circle. Mm. Mm. They, they left Guaranteed Trust Bank, started Access Bank, Today, Access Bank is a top five bank in Nigeria and one sure. of a top bank in Africa. Sure. Why? They just were they just in the right circle. Mm. They were just in the right circle. So being in the right circle can now help your professional, professional life. Can you life. see? And even affect other areas of your life, including your, your mind. Your mind <laughs> and your money. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Before hierarchy. Okay. So after a healthy professional life, mm. you now have Finances. Healthy social social life social, social life. life you yes. now have you need finances a healthy financial life okay healthy people, financial life yes 
people spend a lot of time in stress because they don't know when the next paycheck will come. You know, um, how do you feel when your rent is due in a week's time and you are in a state of panic, you are in panic mode? I mean, that's not life. You go to sleep thinking about it. You wake up thinking about it, you know. And, you know, let me tell you something. Um, poverty is one of the main reasons for collapse in relationships. I'm not saying it's the main one. one but guess what? Yes, one of the main ones. If you talk to relationship experts, they'll tell you that finances... Finances. One of the top. Yeah. No, it's, it's, you're actually correct. Yeah. Finances is one of the top. But not just, not just relationships. In every area of life. Yes. You know, <clears throat> I know people who have gone into prostitution because money was slow. Money was slow. Yeah. I mean... A lady committed suicide. A lady committed suicide um, about a year ago, one year, a couple, if not last year, maybe a couple years back. And what happened? Business was going bad, you know, business wasn't going well. She had two children, two children. Sometimes she would leave the children with friends. And she won't even go and visit her children in days because of the way things were going. You know, she had, there was just a lot of things happening. And guess what? After a while, her 10 year old daughter got pregnant. Hmm. 10 year old daughter got pregnant. Wow, 10 year old. Yeah, 10 year old daughter got pregnant. Wow. And then she took an overdose and committed suicide. Can you imagine? She had just had enough. But everything was down to what? Finances. Finances. So you need to, have a healthy financial life. And some of the things people need to do are very simple. They're not difficult at all. They're not difficult. Do you have a... You don't need to have a great job to have a healthy financial life. You don't have to have a well, big paying job. There are multi-millionaires who have gone bankrupt. Hmm. Who had, Mike Tyson was earning $30 million per fight. Mike Tyson um, was living in a 50-room mansion in Catskill in New York. Eventually went bankrupt. It has nothing to do with how much you're earning. It has to do with your knowledge. Your knowledge. knowledge. So even if you are earning in Nigeria today, even if you are earning hundred thousand naira a month, hundred thousand naira a month, maybe one fifty, and you are very very smart, mm. you are smart and you are prudent with the way you manage money, mm. with the way you manage money. Guess what? Eh? In the next ten twenty years. You can have a higher net worth than somebody who was earning two million a month. I'm telling you, yes. And I'll give you clear examples. So you just ask me, what are you doing? Number one, are you saving money, putting money aside? Because wealth means that you have more assets than liabilities. You're mm. acquiring more assets than liabilities. Mm. Do, you, do you even know what an asset is and what a liability is? You know. Number two, apart from saving money, are you investing? Because it's not savings that will make you wealthy. It's investing. You know, so are you investing in a smart way? There are a lot of people who have bought land in Ekwe only to find out that their lands don't exist. So they are investing, but they are not investing properly. In fact, some of those investments are giving them sleepless nights now. Do you mm, understand? Yes. 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 So are you investing? That's why I say knowledge comes in. You have to read. You have to be in the right uh, seminars. You have to speak with the right people. You, you know, it's work, you know, but it's good work that pays off in the end. So you, number one, you are making decent money you are saving well you are saving and you are then investing well as well mm. you're investing well and then you don't even have to be a guru you don't even have to go to a lot of seminars if you take money that's what is called compound interest compound interest so you are putting 20 percent aside maybe even 10 percent 10 20 percent aside and it's compounding it's mm. compounding there's a man called theodore johnson he never earned more than fourteen thousand dollars in a year $14,000 in a year, which means he was earning just about $1,000 a month. Hmm. Mm -hmm. He was putting 20% aside and compounding it. By the time he was 70, guess how much he was worth? By the time he was 70, guess how much he was worth? How much? Over $70 million. And this was a man who never earned more than $14,000 in a year. Wow. Yes. And yet, by the time he was 70, he was worth over $70 million. Why? Because wow. he understood the power of compounding. But let me also talk about that. Even if you don't, even if you're not on that compounding route, mm. you get money. 
put it in the S and P five hundred. S and P is standards and poor, the five hundred best performing companies in America. Mm. You can go to sleep. You are never going to lose money. Mm, yes. You are never going to lose money in the S and P index. Put it in the index. Mm. You don't go. You don't need to check and be checking every week or every day or every month. You can go to sleep. You are never going to lose money with the S and P five hundred. Yes. Never going to lose money. Mm. Yes. Because sure. it's the five hundred best perform or the fifty hundred in in the UK. Mm. You are not going to lose money. You are not going to lose money. So it's not investing is not it's not difficult. Having a good life, balanced life is not really difficult. All you need to do is know the right thing, take the right steps. Mm. Some of these things are not difficult. You can That's even you, you you can gain gain this knowledge on your phone while scrolling and watching YouTube YouTube shots. Mm, it's true. You know so. That's it. So you have a healthy financial life. And then please take insurance seriously. I've coached people who have gone into depression because they didn't take insurance seriously and their assets were wiped out. Different things happened. So take insurance seriously. Have a budget. Have a 10-year financial goal. Have a 5-year goal. Have a 1-year goal. But plan your life. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. Plan your life. So have, a, have that. Huh? Have um, a financial freedom number, the amount of money you need to earn, mm. have for you never to work again in your life and to be financially free. Have that number. Visualize it. Mm. Visualize it. What you imagine consistently is eventually what will happen to you. You know? So you take insurance seriously, take investment seriously, and then your imagination. So the three eyes: mm. investment, insurance, and your imagination. You get mm. this right, you're going to be good. Mm. You're gonna mm. be good. Mm. Oh, okay, what about the next uh, the next one on the hierarchy after okay. the financial? After the financial life. So yes. you're talking about a healthy creative expression. Healthy creative expression. Yes. When you get ideas, eh, there's something it does to the body, you know. You, you it, it leads to it leads to release of neurotransmitters like endorphins, like serotonin. Sometimes dopamine. When you're doing something creative. Yes, creative. It's something you created something. Maybe you 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 painted something or you came up with a new idea. You know, a new idea for your business. You know, it's good, healthy creative expression. Now, how can you be creative? You know, you need to understand that we have two two parts of our brain. We have the logical brain and the creative brain. Mm. Now, the logical brain handles reasoning. Um, verbal functions, analytical functions. Then you have the creative brain. The creative brain handles emotion, intuition, creativity. But guess what? Repetition allows the logical brain to give way to the creative brain. In repetition, the creative brain becomes more dominant. Mm. And then the logical brain uh, takes the back seat the creative brain becomes more dominant in repetition. Okay. Now, so how can you engage in repetition? So I tell people that innovation is repetition. Innovation is repetition. How can you engage in repetition? Simple. You can visualize a thing repeatedly. It would fix your, it will activate your innovative or creative, the creative center of your brain. You can take an affirmation and repeat it to yourself over time. Over time, over time. That's one of the ways. You can have a routine, a daily routine that you repeat. It will get you in that zone. Yeah, a routine. You're mm -hmm. waking up. You're exercising at the same time. You are um, going to work at the same time. You're leaving from work at the same time. You're taking a break at the same time. You know, you're going to bed at the same time. Mm -hmm. It puts you in that zone as well. Mm -hmm. And then movement, exercise. When you're moving your body, that's mm -hmm. repetition. Okay. It activates. That's why when people exercise, they go for a walk or they're doing some form of movement. Mm -hmm. You know, the more you move, the less you die. Mm -hmm. The more you move, the, the less, less you die. die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you need to write that down. That's the truth. That's the truth. Mm. The, and those blue zones where people live the longest, they are very communal and they move around. They move mm. around. They mm. move around. Okay. They are not sedentary. They move around. So, move. And because when you are moving, you are taking repeated steps. You are activating the creative center of your brain. Don't forget that Mark Twain said, whenever I want to um, get inspired, I pace. You know, Mark Twain. Um, um, Ch Charles Dickens said, whenever I want to get creative, I go on horseback. Mozart. He said, whenever I want to get creative, I, I go on the back of a carriage. Movement and innovation go well together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's true. Then the second thing is that you need to find your innovation profile. Innovation Pro profile. Some people innovate, get their best ideas when they are in the shower. Some people get their best ideas when they are driving. Some people get their best ideas when they are singing. 
Some people get their best ideas when they are with their friends and they are just they are having banter, they are just catching up on things. Some people get their best ideas when they are washing dishes, they are doing dishes. Some people get their best ideas when they are uh, 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 um, taking a walk to the grocery store. You need mm. to find your own innovation profile. I, I get my best ideas when I'm taking a walk. Mm. So I take a walk every day. I don't, I don't miss it. It's intentional. You know, so find your innovation innovation profile, mm. feed it, and flourish in it. Now, the, the final one, I think you have listed five already. It's yeah. Six. Yeah, so creative spiritual expression, there are, two, there, there are two more. Okay, there are two more. The okay. next one is a healthy spiritual connection. Healthy spiritual connection. You know, people have committed suicide because they feel like life is just empty. I'm just, I'm just, I just feel detached. Life is just empty. Anthony Bourdain of CNN committed suicide. Um, Chester Bennington in sync, multi platinum selling artists committed suicide. So many people, stars, celebrities have committed suicide because life just seemed, seemed empty. There was no, they just, there was no that purpose and, and connection. That connection, you know. So, I'm not going to prescribe what faith to, 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 to adopt, but I just say find, study, research, try them out. And just find some, have some form of spiritual connection. If you feel like it appeals to you. And if not, if it doesn't, then you don't have to bother. But on the average, it has shown that people who have some form of religious connection or faith affiliation live longer and have better lives. Mm. Mm. Okay, then the last one. Mm. Okay, so talk about a healthy body. Very crucial. <laughs> Having a healthy body is really, really crucial. You don't healthy want to play body. with that. Okay, <laughs> because if you are... That's the major one that most people know about. Yeah, that. yes, yeah, yes. Because if, if you are... If you are sick, you know, you're always throwing up every morning. How are you going to, how are you going to have your best life? If you're always, you know, um, getting admitted into the hospital. I mean, if you're going to get a good job, they're going to take a medical. They're going to say, okay, go take, go take a medical. <laughs> you know, so you need a healthy body. Mm. And um, so I'll say this concerning a healthy body. Um, first thing is that you want to pay attention to your diet. Okay. Yeah. You want to pay attention to your diet, what you eat. Um, so I'll just talk about the best foods. The best foods are whole foods. Whole foods. Yeah. Give you an example of whole foods. Whole foods are foods that grow from the ground. They are fruits, raw fruits and veggies. Uh, whole foods are the opposite of factory made foods, processed foods, foods that are manufactured in a factory. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of people, majority of the world's population eats mm. factory foods. Yes. Mm. yes. So processed foods, yes. you know, uh, whether you are taking um, a hamburger, you know, or I mean McDonald's, they sell maybe about I think it was, I, I I I hope I'm getting it, but about four hundred million burgers every year, if not more than that. In fact, McDonald's purchase four billion eggs every year, four hmm. billion eggs. 4 billion eggs every year. So, majority of us population eat a lot of um, processed food. You know, the wheat is processed. So, donuts, puff puff, chin chin, you know, eggs noodles, you know, noodles, oh, yeah, I, you I know, no, no, noodles and all that. You know, it's not real, it's not raw, it's not, it doesn't grow from the ground. Noodles is made in a factory. Yes, <laughs> noodles is made in a factory. It's not, it's not. So noodles is not good for health. And because it is processed, let me explain what happens. When you take food and you process it, the real nutrients eh, decrease and the toxicity increases. Mm. Yes. So when you take it through a industry process, you know, they, they, you, you heat it. You know, for example, when you take all these, your chicken and chips, eh, it is, they, are, they have added colors to it to make it look appealing. Mm. It's not that, that yellow that you see, that golden yellow. It's not the real color. It is substances are added to it to make it have that appeal you know and then a lot of this chicken for example is not naturally grown they are grown um with a lot of anti the chickens are given a lot of antibiotics so that they grow faster they are given a lot of um, um substances so that they grow big and they grow fast mm. so a chicken that should naturally grow in a, an amount of time is made to grow in a short amount of time so that they can make commercial they can That's have that commercial benefits saying, you know so yes. so you need to make sure that your food is as organic as possible. Your food is as organic as possible. That's the first thing. Mm. Then even after your food is as organic as possible, you, you try to make sure that you understand what a proper diet is. 
Yeah. But you know, because of uh, work life balance and how people are trying to meet up with time and task and work, mm. people just go for all this fast food. Yes, and they'll pay for they will, so, they'll, they'll eventually have to pay the price for it. So, how can people uh, see, see that they go for more whole foods when they are trying to beat up with time, work, so that and what they need is just fast food close to them so they can have something within them? You have to just decide on what you want. Do you want to have a healthy life or do you want to uh, pay for your health? With your wealth eventually in the future the, the truth about it is that some of these things excuses that people give are not really tenable because you can make your salad eh, in record time at home take it to work with you and during break you can eat you can take your healthy foods you can make it over the weekend eh, mm -hmm. bring it out every day you know you warm it take it to your work and it's you know it's you can plan you can plan for it it's not as difficult as people say Say, say it is you know so that's it um um look at carbohydrates for example let's break it down into uh, all the different carbohydrates mm -hmm. a lot of people are taking a lot of unhealthy carbohydrates unhealthy yes carbohydrate. unhealthy carbohydrates a lot of them are they are processed okay. so if you look at wheat now wheat is made up of the bran the gem and the endosperm for most wheats and that people consume like indomie noodles eh, it's just the brand the 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 the, the, the just the endosperm the, the the brand and the germ has been taken out so the nutrients the real nutrients have been taken out that lost so what, what you are eating eh, is good for your taste buds but it's bad for your the, the, all the nutrients the majority of the nutrients are lost already why are they taking out is it intentional or just because they want to preserve it uh, yes all these things are we, we, the, the 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 reasons why they do so eh, is for one commercial purposes commercial purposes and if you look at, for example, refined sugar, mm. refined sugar is very dangerous to the body. Very, very dangerous to the body. In fact, um, one of the worst things that you can put in your body is refined sugar. And what it does for your brain. Sugar. And now, sugar that has been refined, taken to refined in a in a factory. So, what you the cube of sugar that you take, or your granulated sugar, yes. you know, it's what I mean That's by right. uh, or and those things that uh, contain them. So, your carbonated soft drinks. That contains seven cubes of sugar for 35 cl. You know, it's it's just killing your, your body. It, that, that excess sugar. You know what sugar does? Sugar contains uric acid. Uric acid is a precursor to depression. Hmm. That's number one. Then let me tell you what sugar does. Sugar is one of the leading causes for obesity. Let me tell you what happens. There are two hormones that um, contribute to hunger. And satiation in your body there's ghrelin and leptin ghrelin makes you hungry so your body produces ghrelin it sends a signal to your brain that you're hungry and then you eat once you're full your brain produces leptin that tells you that you are full okay. yes okay. now guess what when you take sugar sugar reduces the leptin sensitivity in your brain so when leptin should be produced to tell you that you are full uh, that is not done. It doesn't. You, you don't. You don't get that signal. So you keep on eating and eating and eating. That's why the countries where people consume the most sugar. America is the sugar consumption capital of the world. America has the most obese people. Mm -hmm. So where sugar is the highest, obesity is the highest. And where wow. obesity is the highest, you have the highest rate of heart disease, eh, um, cancer, heart disease, cancer, and you know all the other. Thank you. That's why the foods that are much more healthy. That yes, for example, if you talk about carbohydrates, eh, mm. take healthy carbohydrates like ofada rice, eh, um, oats, um, granola for those who can afford it, quinoa, you know, whole, whole, then even if you are going to take things like um, plantain, mm, roast the plantain, don't boil it. If you are going to take yam, eh, roast the yam, potatoes, roast, roast them, eh, because when you boil food, eh, most of the nutrients are lost. Why do people say something that is boiled better than something that is roast or fried? Or no, roast? no, no, no. Hold on, hold on. Fried is the worst. Okay. Then after that, boiled. But wow. the best way is roast. Let me give you an example. You see, yam. When you boil yam, you will notice that the water eh, is thick. Yes. The nutrients in the yam have left. That's why the water wow. is thick. Then you have to add salt to it for it to be tasty. When you roast yam, you don't need to add salt. Wow. Do you understand? So, when, when, when you roast yam, eh, the nutrients are still there. Part of the nutrients are still there. When you boil yam, a lot of the nutrients are lost. Wow. At 100 degrees, eh, wow. a lot of the 
nutrients at boiling point of water 100 degrees a lot of nutrients are lost so what you are eating you are not even eating the food the food doesn't have its nutrients it's filling your belly but it doesn't the nutrients that should Can be you here. imagine i'm sharing this for the first time wow yes this is interesting. So, so, now you mentioned uh or if or father right those healthy one people that don't have money how can they cope with buying okay so yeah yes okay of- very good so what you can do is that like i said you can look for a more affordable raw carbohydrate you can even do with your yam cocoa yam you can do with even cassava mm? All those you can even take your corn mm, and take a roasted corn you know uh so all those carbon uh, hydrates that are from the ground you know what the what these components are like from the ground your yam you know plantain mm, you can roast your plantain uh your greens millets I, I lived in the north for a while your millets you know the best carbohydrates are oats grains and legumes so your greens you know Yes, they are very healthy. They are very healthy. Huh? You can roast it. Stay away from starchy, a lot of starchy. So, but that's why you can roast them. If you can't afford those other ones, like um, your father rice, the granolas, and um, the quinoa. The and roast, roast, roast. Now, you know, the way eh, people live, eh, like, in apartments like this, people okay. may not have uh, things to roast. How do you talk about roasting? I mean, people that are poor, they can, they, they, or they, they can use them. Um, um firewood now no 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 the most of them, we live in nigeria eh, where majority of the population the majority of the population eh, live in poverty how do they cook did they have gas cookers or oh, this is no they they can use firewood and roast and roast whatever they they want to eat they can use i lived in the north and i lived in a village and a lot of people used to cook like that so if you're talking about if it's a matter of poverty the poor people are anyway eh, they don't even they don't even use kerosene stoves they use more of you know the firewood you know because when you start boiling food and frying food you are losing you are, you are getting into the unhealthy uh, um um dimensions. So living in huge apartment that, that are uh-huh. there, you know? very good they cannot buy things like an air fryer okay. uh, they can buy an oven where they can roast things you can roast it in your oven you can bake um planting baked planting you can bake um potato bake potato you can bake it you know okay. yes okay. you can bake it rather than frying so what are the other oh. class of the push or avoid totally that's very dangerous to health okay like i said everything sugar everything uh, sugar yes sugar when mm. you say sugar is good for the body for energy wait hold on i'll break it down for you now that different types of sugar mm, there is healthy sugar and unhealthy sugar now when you're taking sugar uh, especially sugar that has a high glycemic index what happens is that the sugar goes into your blood your blood sugar increases when your blood sugar increases your energy decreases but with the rapid increase will not come a rapid decrease that rapid decrease will lead to a drop in your attention span on your mood hmm. uh, so that's what you call you have to just study what they call a high glycemic index and foods with a high glycemic index so they but they are healthy sugars so for example when you take your fruits your fruits mm. uh, mm. some of those fruits they have healthy sugars so they don't lead to that rush of they don't have the high glycemic index and little in russia so you know you take your purple here sometimes you bring some apples you know you take some bananas you know bananas are very rich in serotonin the happy hormone wow. that's why when monkeys take banana they're happy they're jumping, around. they're jumping around yes bananas are rich in serotonin so take your fruits don't play with your fruits bananas have apples eh? your cruciferous veggies you have some carrots have some um cabbage cucumbers, lettuce you know watermelon. cucumbers watermelon you know have those very good don't play with it don't play with it at all have your fruits have your veggies you know c- uh, c- cabbage very good for for the guts very very good for the guts you know you take your you, you can juice it you know or eat it raw like that you know these things are just amazing so yeah, this is what people should do you stick to that's what and those fruits you know especially when it's whole fruit so you're not it's not like yeah 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 it has been processed you buy you buy them and then you i'm not juice you can juice it the juicing juicing doesn't make it harmful though. juicing doesn't make it um less organic juicing means that you put it in a juicer you are blending it about the ones people buy in the market like it depends wait, wait. Life alive juice no, no, no 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 that's not no 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 those are not juices now those, that's that's still like that's like that's still poison no? but let me tell you why let me tell you why you know what a lot of these people are very deceptive sorry to use yes, that word because yes that's true 
a lot of these juices, uh, they still contain sugar. There are many words for sugar. There's lactose. There's molasses. There's, there's maltose. There's high fructose corn syrup. There's fructose. When they say it doesn't contain sugar, but it contains fructose, fructose or it contains molasses, or it contains high fructose corn syrup, it's another name for sugar. It's just it's also there's that there's no need to deceive people and tell lies. You understand? It's not it's not liars will perish. So don't, there's no need. You understand? Is it contains sugar? You understand? And then those fruits are processed such that you can it you can leave them for two months and they won't expire because it's processed. Preservatives has been added to them. Hmm. Yes, and those when you add all those preservatives, it makes it makes it less nutritious. You know, it, it reduces the nutritional value. So just go to the market, buy your fruits for one week, three days, blend it as you know, often as you eat, and then you know have it. you can store it in your fridge one or two days, store it, and then you have. But yes, so. Yeah, just leave that kind of life. So that means people can actually can also avoid the, not just taking minerals, even juice too. Like people will just go to the market and say, "Give me." I don't want to mention the brand, but there's yes. many brands. Yes, yes. That you see no, all those, market. all those. You see, if you are, there are some companies that make smoothies. Smoothies. Some of them are well made, and then they say consume it within one or two days or so. You know, some of them. If you are sure of what you are. Um, eating or mm. you're consuming and mm. you show the process and everything is healthy <clears throat> it, it was created in a very i mean pr produced in a uh healthy environment yeah you can do so but i will advocate that you just do it yourself after a while it doesn't for me i've been doing this for many years it don't take me a long while to juice my cabbage it doesn't take me a long while to do it before you need to cut it you know put it in my blender uh my smoothie maker it does it i add honey to it and i'm drinking it's, it's it tastes as good as coke or fanta i drink it you know, that's great. People talk about the benefit of health of eggs. Do you think it's very good for the body? Uh, I think it doesn't increase your cholesterol because what cholesterol does is that it uh, thickens your blood vessels and then it, it leads to hypertension and high blood pressures. As long as your cholesterol level is, it doesn't take your cholesterol level high, you know. Um, I'm not an egg fan. I'm, I'm not, for personally, I won't advocate for dairy and eggs i'm not a big fan of dairy and eggs i won't advocate for it i won't advocate for it so when it comes to beef, beef. chicken okay um, fish which okay, okay. is much better is it healthy meat beef is it chicken is it turkey is okay. it fish which okay. of them which of all the okay. of protein is more okay better? i'll see as much as possible reduce your meat intake but if you are going the ones you should really run away from are uh, red meats so you have goat meat you have cow meat you know uh, red meat, red meat. Stay away from that as much red as possible. Majorly cow meat. Yes, and not just cow, goats too, lamb. You know all those things. So stay away from it. Yes. Let me tell you why. You know when you heat red meat at certain temperatures, two compounds are produced: hmm. uh, um, heterocyclic amines and polycyclic hydrocarbons. Those two compounds are precursors to cancer. They are carcinogenic. Hmm. Yes. So. It has been proven now, even by the American Food Association, that red meats are carcinogenic. You can Google it, but red meats are so stay away from that. You can a healthier option will be fish. Fish. Mm -hmm. Now, more healthier than talking. Yes. Why not? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why not? And and yes, of course. And there's some of this chicken. The way they are produced and preserved. That's another thing. Is another factor. So, and then if you even if you have good to eat chicken, uh, God spare your life. Uh, at least try to roast it. Don't cook it and fry it. Mm. You, know, you roast, roast it. Mm. You know so. Um, <clears throat> but the healthiest will be fish, and then after that, you now have other white meats like chicken and turkey. Okay. Mm. Now you were discussing earlier on. We were talking about blue zone and all of okay. that. Okay. Oh, yes. 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 Much longer. Now I want to get it clearly. Is it because they live there? I want you to break down on that blue zone. Is it because they live there? They stay. They live much longer because of what they eat their activities and the daily uh, things that they do or is it because if i relocate from here to go to those countries those blue zone countries i'm automatically going to live longer or is it because what do you think is the reason why people in that blue zone area live much longer than others so in those blue zones uh, yes um there are certain habits that they have they eat a lot of grains, greens and beans. Grains, greens and beans. Grains, greens, greens and beans. beans. Greens means that your vegetables. 
Yes. Eh? So here, let me add, for those of us in Nigeria, don't play with your ugu, your okra, your veggies. Don't okra? Play with... Yes. Ah, well, well, of course. Okra is a veggie. Why not? Uh -huh. Yes. Okay, what? Okra is meat. Abonok. <laughs> Abonok. <laughs> Yes, play. Don't don't take your ugu seriously. Your vegetables, take your vegetables very seriously. Take it, you know. If you're going to eat rice, you know, have a lot of veggies in it, you know. So, like I said, so they eat a lot of greens, greens and beans, and and they eat minimal meat, if any, minimal. They they, they keep meat to the minimal. Okay. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that they have an eighty percent rule. They eat until they are eighty percent full. Don't eat until you are full. Eat until you are eighty percent full. That twenty percent gap makes the difference between those who lose weight and those who gain weight. How do they classify the eighty percent and twenty percent? But you know now when you are full, don't you know? I know when I'm full, but how would I know when okay, I'm eighty percent full? Okay, eat until you are half full, then fifty percent, and then after fifty percent, just add a spoon, a few spoonfuls. And if I just start feeling full, I should just stop. Mm, even before you start feeling full, just take for example, if you're going to take a wrap of amala, just take, just you shouldn't be able to half of this, my hand. Just, just. Wrap of amala. How you many know? times should I eat a day? Yes. Because if I eat that kind of that wrap, I will still be really hungry. <laughs> so how many times should I eat a day if I'm eating just those those short short wrap? Okay, you know, you 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 have liver, you have a liver in your you have livers in your body, you know. So when you eat your body, energy is formed in your liver in form of glycogen. Mm -hmm. Um your body is created to um deplete di like glycogen levels every 12 hours so if you eat more than twice a day you don't deplete your glycogen levels you can end up having a fatty liver your body was wired eh, to deplete your glycogen levels um every 12 hours and the glycogen is according to for... yes glycogen i mean sorry your liver you know and it, when you eat energy is stored in your liver in mm. form of gly glycogen okay. Eh? Mm. okay and those levels are wired to be depleted every 12 hours, you know, so that you don't store excess fat in your liver. So if you eat more than 12 hours, I'm sorry, if, if you eat more than twice a day, every day is 24 hours. So, you know, if you eat more than twice a day, you don't, you don't, you, you, you end up having more energy or fat in your liver because of that, because your, your glycogen levels are not depleted. So it now stores in, in your liver as excess, you know, so. That, uh, that's why I would not recommend that people eat more than twice a day. I would never. Twice a day. Yes, you know, it's not. It's not. It, it, when 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 people say it's three times a day, it's concept, not. Where does that concept no, come no, from? That's been from foundation. You know what? It was. It was the food industry in connivance with the pharmaceutical industry and the health industry, eh, pushing it out to make sure that food industries sell more. This yes. secret must leak. Of course, of course it does. I mean, a lot of people know about it. A lot of people know about it. Of course. Seriously. It, it is. Yes, yes, okay. yes. Yeah. Continue. You see, let me tell you something. Eh? When some of these agricultural policies were made to win elections, when presidents were running for office, they put in some of these policies so that they could win the farmers. Because in those days, most of the people were farmers. And so you had to win the farmers to win elections. So they had to put in policies that were not necessarily good for people. For example, in America, high fructose corn syrup, sugar, poison, poison mm. sugar, mm. is subsidized. But apple is not subsidized. So in America, it's, it's cheaper to buy a burger than to buy apple. And yet, it takes no money to produce a burger than to produce the apple. So it's about, you see, it, because it's, it's a cartel where people are working hand in hand to make sure that people fall. Because when, the more people fall sick, the pharmaceutical industry is going to gain. You know, so wow. they, all of them, they, 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 they work hand in yes, hand in cartel. So it's just, it's a cartel. So uh, when people say three square meals, mm. no, it's not, it's not, there's no health, um, there's no health facts to back it up that you must eat three times a day. For example, I've been fasting every day for 10 years. I, I've been eating on the average once a day for 10 years, 10 years. Eh? And my health has been better in the last 10 years than at any other point in my life. Hmm. You understand? So, guess what? There are a lot of people who have um, reverse cancer with intermittent, with intermittent and prolonged fasting. Yes. I mean, there's Guy Tannenbaum who reversed stage 4 cancer with um, fasting. There is um, Fred Everard. There is Alan Goldhammer who runs a clinic or a health center. Let me use that word. In um, there's Lauren Lockman. 
these people run health centers where they have helped people to reverse a lot of diseases you can google these people you can watch it alan goldhammer with 40 day fast what only fast what only fast to reverse a lot of diseases um because we need to understand that i say this that fasting is the best diet the best diet is fasting some people say they're playing with ulcer no no it doesn't necessarily mean that everybody who can engage in a fast eh, is going to eventually have ulcer no no it doesn't work in fact and then for people who have ulcers eh, by taking your cabbage juice eh, you would heal ulcers naturally and even if you have h pylori by taking cabbage juice you will heal you will heal that so but fasting what fasting does is that it's when you're fasting you go into ketosis so instead of storing uh, and burning sugar you're not burning fat you know which is good for the body good for the brain um after a while your, your infl inflammation goes down your immunity goes up mm. you know when you're fasting you produce bdnf brain derived neurotrophic factors which is good for the brain your brain is producing new brain cells when you're fasting mm. yes mm. fasting is amazing it's a, it's a wonder fasting is a wonder it does amazing things for every part of the body including your skin so when you're fasting uh, your body after a while will begin to eat up your all the dirt in your body mm. all the dirt in your body so people have um a lot of undigested feces in their body when you're fasting your body will eat up a tumor if there's a tumor in your body mm. yeah fasting can lead to your body eating up tumor. because you see when your body does not have food there's no food to eat in your body you're not eating your body starts looking for things to eat mm. yes in your body so it starts to consume your fat that's why when people fast they lose weight and because your body was actually eating your fat okay yes uh, 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 they lose weight yeah because but your body you are burning fat and your body is eating you are burning fat mm. because you, you are exercising but even if somebody who is fasting and does not even exercise mm. and after and does prolonged fasting without exercise you will still lose weight because your body is eating hmm. mm. your hmm. body is eating wow eating. wow now you so okay you, you eat you, you, so in fasting your body would eat your impurities in your body if there's a cyst in your body to eat it if there's a crystal deposit, if there's a tumor, it will eat it and all that. What if there is none of all these things? Uh -huh, then uh -huh, that. So it's not begin to eat on your muscles or, or your your fat first of all fats. Once it eats on your fat, then it not goes to your muscles. Now there's a need for balance because fasting should not go beyond a prolonged period. I mean, if you do more than a forty day fast, it could start eating up your bones. Mm. Yes, and so there there has to be a balance to it. It has to be that balanced. Okay. All, the, all the people that are, that gym grows up muscles, they should they, they fast as well. We'll do with all those muscles and everything. Come on. It depends on how much fasting they are doing. It depends on how much fasting they are doing. But you can. There's a guy called Kevin Gates, very muscular guy, muscles, and he's doing. He has done forty day fasts, mm. and he still has his muscles and all that. So you can Google some of these people to see. But you know, mm, let your food be your medicine. Let your food be your medicine. But the best diet is fasting the it's best fasting. diet is fasting fasting increases your stress resistance you know we spoke about stress in the beginning yes fasting increases your resistance to stress wow fasting has so okay many... now you talked about i want us to just get a balance on that talking about eating that twice a day because you mentioned what one of the you mentioned each small wrap of uh like fufu or something like that so if i'm eating small wrap of fufu, i should eat it twice a day when you say twice a day does it mean what time in the morning and what time in the evening and how can those two small wraps carry someone for that twice a day? Now, I'm not going to legislate on you know whether people should eat twice. A, I mean, sorry, whether they should eat in the morning or in the afternoon or in the evening. You know, uh, so twice a day. I'm not going to say it should be morning and evening or after morning and afternoon or morning and night. You know, no, 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 no. Find what works for you. Find what works for you, and you know, uh, face it. But what I will say is that excessive eating is dangerous for the health and i think that for people who eat many people who eat three times a day they are already in the excess they are already in the excess you are giving your liver too much work to do you know you're not going to deplete your glycogen levels you are giving your body too much work to do that's the first thing the second thing i'll say is that um especially for people who want to lose weight they should eat the right diet the right foods because um some fiber rich foods are better than some starchy foods but minimal proportions and they sometimes we feel like we need to eat a lot no no we don't need to eat a lot your body does not really need a whole lot of food uh -huh. yes uh, your body doesn't need a whole lot of food so um that's why i say that you can eat in measured quantities but if people feel like after eating in those courses they are weak 
they are unproductive and they can eat they can eat bigger amounts they can eat bigger amounts and people should always also go to a doctor for medical checkup or a healthcare facility for medical checkups to check your blood sugar your liver your kidneys mm -hmm. you know you check you know mm -hmm. do the necessary tests because mm -hmm. i'll talk to you about dreams the dreams are calling mm -hmm. for wellness because one of them is radical med medical checkup you know yeah. Okay, um, well, well, we'll get to that. Now, the thing is that for the eating, just I just want to get clarity on that one. So, people can, when it comes to food, there is no no quantity. Any quantity can go continuously for the day. No, I, I'm not saying, no, no, that, that's wrong. Because, for example, moderation is key. Does that, so, because, does that mean that you cannot eat 40 apples? No. Because if I'm fasting and I do not eat normal food, I can be able to eat fruits but, anytime. But does that mean that you can eat 10 melons? 10 melons. Or, 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 or ten pop <laughs> yeah, no, 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 there are people who are fruitarians. They they have survived their lives on fruits alone, and fruits have everything. They are fruits. It's possible to survive it's life on very, fruits. Very, yeah, it's very, alone. Yes, it's very, alone. It's very, it's very. It's very because there was, research, there was a research I read that someone that someone tried to do that for a period of time, and his body started lacking when it comes to mm, natural food. At a point, in time. I think maybe the person's combination because fruits contain all the classes of nutrients that we need: carbohydrates, protein. The the fruits. If if the balance of fruits, some fruits are rich in some and so you have to combine everything. So they say eat the rainbow. Eat something that is red, like tomato that is high in lycopene. Then eat um, uh, greens, broccoli, you know. They are rich in multivitamins, B12, B6, you know, uh, folic acid and all that. And then uh, eat... Um, um, people should, you know, talk to a dietitian and a nutritionist. But eat the rainbow. So eat something, something yellow, we, uh, orange, you know. Eat something... Uh, um um white mm. you know so just eat the rainbow it's the rainbow okay now for which to finalize on this now i want to go back to that blue zone like i said earlier i said if i relocate to that to that environment, i told you that they eat a lot of greens greens and beans yes. there they, they, they are things that they do that so make that them live long if someone that is not living there behave in that same manner that they behave it's yes. possible to live the same way yes they live there. yes okay just yes. to get a character that it doesn't necessarily mean that it's only those who no, no, that no, live no, there no, it's no, about no. their habits no, it's about their, their habits. lifestyle yes and their activities yes. and it's not just what they eat i said that they are very communal they have a lot of social healthy social groups and interaction they belong to some social interact uh, group or the other you know you in those communities you see that you know um grandfather mm. father and son live in the same community so they are very communal then they walk they move it's more better to walk than to ride take bikes and things like that when you mean take a bike, you mean a motorcycle. Yes, motorcycle, drive or being boss. Well, what I'll say to people is that get the right amount of exercise every day or every week. Yeah, I'll say that four hours of exercise. And exercise by me, exercise, it doesn't have to be high intensity interval training. It could be just moderate exercise where, you know, you work for 20 minutes a day, you know, or more, depending on what you like and what works for you. And that's why you always have to also cross check with a doctor. Go for medical checkup, see your doctor regularly, and all that. You know, so I you need to walk ten thousand steps a day. And that ten thousand steps is a myth. It doesn't really have to be ten thousand steps. You know, it's a myth. You know, just like saying that uh, ten thousand hours will make you a master at what you do. Mm, you know, yes. You know, and you know, the people dangle figures. When when I studied it, I just saw that it was not. There's no real credence to so that because for people who exercise up to twenty minutes a day, four hours a week, mm. you know. On the average, that's okay for, for for many people, and you don't have to. They don't have to take the ten thousand steps, you know. Okay, so and let's move move from that. And, and then let's come. The okay. the blue zones. One more thing, please, mm. about the blue zones. Apart from okay. what they eat and the fact that they are very communal and that they have um, some form of religious affiliation, faith affiliation, or the other, they always take time to be grateful to to find something they are grateful for. So they have good people around them. I mean, a healthy social um, network. You know, they eat the right thing. They move around. They move their bodies. You know, and just like village life. You know, you walk, and but they also try to be grateful for life and things and that. So basically, that's it. And don't forget the eighty percent rule. They eat until they are eighty percent full.
Okay. Guys, if you're enjoying this as much as I'm doing, just take one minute and hit the subscribe button and like this video. And also share this with one or two persons. Now, let's move. You were talking earlier on, you were talking about depression and things like that and how things can cause depression, maybe your health and your holistic well-being. Now, what are the nine signs of depression or the signs that you can pick to know that someone is moving into depression? Okay, before that, let me talk about why people are depressed. There okay. are th basic things that make people depressed. Okay. When people are in an, a toxic relationship, mm. a toxic job, mm, when people are rejected, when people feel abandoned, when people feel criticized, mm, rejected, you know, rejection, abandoned, abandonment, criticism, a poor toxic environment, poor toxic, environment. Or toxic work environment, toxic work. or toxic relationship, you know. Um, so others include some, an some anxiety, you know, stress, you know. So those are the reasons why people are depressed. Now, the signs of depression include mood swings, erratic mood swings, you know, you're just happy now, then you're sad later, you know, mm. or lack of concentration, it's difficult for you to focus. Then your eating habits just are very frenetic, you know. Then you are sleeping too less or too much. Frenetic means you like eating, eating, eating. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, frenetic means that there's just a lot of un uncoordinated energy. Yes. So that's could be part of it. Then, sleeping too less or too little or eating too much or not at all. Or you just, just lack an appetite, you know. And then, you lack willpower. There's no, there's no desire for anything. Your willpower is so low. Willpower is so low. There's a lot of perplexity, lack of, and then lack of enthusiasm for anything. So these are the signs. If a person has a combination of those signs, the signs. then it shows that ah, the person is moving into depression. How can that yeah. be cured? How can that be cured? Okay, very good. Yeah. So you need to now do things like, first of all, find out what is the cause of your depression. Eh? Eh, um, what's the cause of your depression? When you find the cause of your depression, generally speaking, the way to cure depression is to get into the right social circle, exercise, good for depression meditation is good for depression eh? laughing playing with animals eh? is good for depression and then finding something that you like to do like your purpose in life those are those are the combination of things that can cure depression once again exercise meditation meditation um having the right social circle right people eh? um laughing engaging in fun activities and then you know playing with animals you know those are combination of factors that can help people cure generally speaking but mm. the first thing to do is to find the cause of the depression so that, what i heard someone was talking about the fact that depression doesn't exist that it's just a coin word that people just made up that there's no reason for someone to be depressed at all i think this guy likes saying that a lot uh, what's that his name Andrew Trait. i don't even know him I know Andrew Tate. Uh, so he likes saying depression doesn't exist and things like that. So well, let's move away from that. Let, you were talking earlier on, you were talking about uh, dreams. D-R-E-M-S. I want you to break it down let me you know, understand it much better. Okay, so dreams are an acronym for wellness. Eh? What people should do to stay, stay in a state of wellness. So D is for diets. I've spoken about the diets that you yeah, should have. You know, diets. a lot of uh, the kind of carbohydrates you should take, with the healthy proteins, you know um not seeds and fatty fish are very good for you know those who want the the right balance of um proteins and nutrients and all that um i've spoken about the healthiest carbohydrates um they have also spoken about the healthiest meats you know i've spoken about the necessity for fruits and vegetables and all that so diet mm. is number one i've spoken mm. as fast for about fasting as one of your best diets then the second thing is R, R is rest. You have to know when to rest. The human body is a machine. If you overwork it, it's going to pack up like any machine. Hmm. The, the, the human body is a machine. If you overwork it, it's going to pack up. I've seen people who slumped in churches or you know social gatherings because they were overworked. How do you know you're overworking your body? Um, after a while, your body will tell you. You know, you find out that you are this. I mean, I have I know two people who were driving on the road, fell asleep, got into an accident and died. You know, you are over when you when you are getting tired, you know, you are pushing yourself. You know you are tired though, but you are still pushing, pushing yourself. You are still pushing, pushing, she pushing. Must, must, you know so people like that you see at work, they will forget basic details. 
they are driving, they are sleeping when they are driving, things like that. You know, you can tell when a person's body is has been pushed to the limits. You know, and I always I always say this, please always make sure you are doing regular checkups, you know. So that's when you know that your body is um, because sometimes you don't even know when your blood pressure is getting high, your cholesterol is getting high. So go to go everybody human being should do comprehensive medical checkup every year. Every year. So after that's that's been said and done, mm -hmm. eh, you have to rest. There's weekly rest. There's daily the first let's start with daily rest. There's daily rest. You should rest every day. Why should you work for 20, 24 hours? You can't you can't do that. You know, how many people have that capacity? You know, some people can sleep for four hours a day and they are good. Good. Few people can do that. Some people six hours a day. Recommended hours of sleep for every human being on the average is eight hours. So take your daily rest. That's what I want to get. It's that not, important. What is the importance not, of that sleep and how many hours is recommended? Uh, on the average, on. on the average, eight hours of sleep. People, some people do four hours and three hours. So. Yeah, some people can. I know people who have done four hours. Like Donald Trump, the current American president, is over 70. And he's known to get only about four hours of sleep. And yet he's over 70. You understand? And you can see him. He's still going for rallies and all that. So, yes, I won't. It's, there's no casting stone. But on the average, eight hours of sleep. I know myself. I know my system. I know how many hours I need to function at my best. Okay. Then continue. You mentioned the... the so daily rest. Yes. Daily rest. Weekly rest. Weekly rest. Okay. Take a day of rest. Then you have... You can even do a monthly rest as well. And then yearly rest where you go on vacation. Studies have shown that people who who go on vacation eh, are, have a lesser risk of heart disease than those who don't go on vacation every year. No vacation at all. Every day. Working, 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 working. Especially if you enjoy your job. Mm. It's a different thing you because your body is sending different signals to you. Yes, you understand? Yes. But if it's if it's stressful, it's dangerous. Yeah, so it's a rest. The D R E M S E is exercise. I've e spoken about exercise, exercise that spoken about you know it. at least walk every day 20 minutes or four hours in a week. Basic exercise, best in walking. You can do others like swimming, go to a gym, you know, push weights. I don't know, but exercise. M M. Medical checkup. Medical I'm speaking check about up medical checkup. Social interactions, right? The right people in your field. You don't want toxic people. You don't want people that, you know, that keep on telling you that you're not good enough. You know, mm. you're not this. Now, earlier when you were talking about on the uh, on health, I mean on wellness, and you were talking about the spiritual uh, wellness too. People do talk about things regarding uh, spirituality and physicality. I want to get clarity on it if you also have an idea on it. Does the spiritual actually control the physical? Okay, that question borders on, you know, faith. And faith is subjective. It's based on, um, um, part of it is really subjective, you know. Yes, I'm a person of faith. I belong to some, I belong to a faith, 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 a line of faith. You know, I believe that it's spiritual controls the physical i believe that the invisible controls the visible i believe that the things that were not are not are not seen or cannot be seen eh, are what contributes or make the things that can be seen for example um everything you can see is made up of atoms you know an atom is made up of protons neutrons and electrons neutrons protons neutrons, and electrons are made up of what invisible particles if you if you put food that is not moving. No. It's just food. On the one spot for seven days, you come back, you see maggots. Mm. So something that was in uh, or not, not that didn't have life, just on one spot, is now producing maggots that are moving, have life. Do you understand? So I believe it empirically. I believe that it's spiritual control. Everything. Yes, and I believe that you know the same way you cannot see germs, but they exist. You can only see them through a microscope you can there is an invisible world if we say that does that mean that when someone walks on the road and went and go under a trailer and kills himself does is it the spiritual that control that person i believe that all things happen for a reason and that you can trace it to some something spiritual something in the um, um something in the cosmic and spiritual world which supersedes the physical world so why are people who hold like or hold against what they do or who to judgment regarding what they do if it's the spiritual that actually control that actions well you need to rephrase that why are people hold to judgment like why is the why is the concept of judgment 
in every action be there if what i do if anything that i do it is the spiritual that controls it why am i hold to judgment on my actions uh, the fact the, the spiritual control the physical and you know what human beings have a spirit so your spirit now eh, has that preeminence to control what you do if you don't if you can't control what you do then you are not you are not a you are not you are not a well-balanced human being you're not a well-balanced human being you know so that doesn't that doesn't mean that human beings don't have a responsibility or cannot be in control Okay, let's leave away from that. Now, what's the connection between stress, uh, disease, and wrong thinking? Yes, I've spoken about that. That you know, when you when you are thinking wrongly, uh, mm. some hormones are released in your body, stress hormones, cortisol, epinephrine, norepinephrine, and what it does is that it weakens your immune system, it activates mm. your sympathetic, sympathetic nervous system. So I spoke about that. Okay, now we are trying. We are we're, in order for we to start uh, rounding off. I want to get clarity on once people are trying to get their mental state because you spoke about the mental state and mental well-being clear and clearly so does the mental well-being is it what is responsible for someone's achievement or high peak performance in life when you are mentally stable or does it regard to what you do in action wise I mean, your daily actions and habits and what you do, or does your mental state come into making you to achieve peak performance in life? They are all connected. It's what you're doing with your mind. It's what is going on in your mind that will determine what you do. You can, most of the time, it's our thoughts that lead to our actions. Mm. Yeah? And then, you know, it has been proven that people's emotional intelligence is what contributes to their success in life more than even their intellectual uh, prowess. You know, so... Yeah, they are connected. You th is what, the, way, the, is way, the way you think that will determine the actions you take, your decisions, your habits, and your life. So they are, they are not independent. They are connected to each other. You are angry, you take a step. You are happy, you do something. You also, and then you think. You think, you come up with something, and then you act it out. Some people face challenges when it comes to maintaining their health and their wellness in life. How do you, what are the advice you can give to people that are having challenges when it comes to maintaining their wealth or doing their daily habit to make to ensure that they are living well, healthy, and well hmm. you can get a life coach okay you know i'm a life coach by the grace of god you can get a life coach who can help them so what the life coach does gives you the support accountability and guidance okay yeah so then the second thing they could do is that they could read up on their own study like i said it all starts with your mind the kind of information you have and then they can now start to practice more for example a lot of habits i have today i started small fasting staying off certain foods i started small by small gradually and i built it i built it uh, um meditation i started small five minutes here five minutes there then I, I eventually started doing hours of meditation alone you know so you know whatever life is um a journey whatever you want to do whatever you want to become whatever you want to do you can find out how is it done and then you can start small and begin to build it does meditation help the mind or is meditation connected to help making someone also live well when you meditate every day um meditation it may of course meditation helps the mind of course of course it's i mean because what is meditation you know there are different types of meditation of course but meditation is supposed to help you focus your attention on the right things which is going to help your mind and then help other aspects of your body so of course but there are different types of meditation. There's visualization, there's mantra meditation, there's breathing meditation, and there are other types. There's mindfulness, which was introduced by John Kabat-Zinn a couple of decades ago. So mm -hmm. there are different types. So all those different types you mentioned, they're all holistic, they work together. The, you know, there are different types. It's just like saying there are different types of food or there are different types of clothes, you know. You find the one that works for you and you do it. There are different types of meditation. Maybe we can have a different session. Okay. a different uh, episode in meditation and that's that, wow yeah. wow this is powerful now in summary what are you going to run up to see generally regarding health and wellness okay i'll say that people need to take their health and their wellness seriously it affects the quality of the life you live in every way your finances your social interactions your mm. relationships your marriage everything so you, people should be very intentional about it um people should be knowledgeable people should take the right steps and uh, and if they do so, they will have a very beautiful life. Life is beautiful. It's a, it's a privilege to be alive. It's a privilege to be alive. And 
life can be beautiful can, life can be lived optimally and beautifully if people do the right things and so I, I encourage and i hope that people will do the right things the right things <clears throat> and that's actually the right thing thank you very much thank you're you welcome. once again Mr. you're welcome Adekomi. you're welcome uh, guys thank my very special friend mr adekomi olusayan for this very wonderful session on health and wellness i believe you have been highly highly really impacted i'm really glad on this and i also want him to share how you would like people to reach out to him or to contact him on anything or things like that okay if you want to reach out to me you can send me a dm on instagram at olusonya adekomi my instagram handle is olusonya adekomi <clears throat> you can watch my youtube videos my youtube channel is adekomi olusonya comment on them you can subscribe like if you choose to and then um yeah those are the principal ways of getting in because you could maybe you can even email me send me an e send me an email at mr etiquette online at yahoo.com mr etiquette online at yahoo.com so basically that's it so that is it guys this is your first time of coming to the channel the way to hit the subscribe button like this video share it with people that this is highly going to benefit health they say it's wealth and when you are healthy mentally emotionally psychologically spiritually and physically then you can achieve more with your life and also do better with yourself. I remain Benzik and thank my guests once again, Mr. Dekomi Olusonya. And I'm going to see you again next time. Cheers.